morning. This is Scott Cullen, Editor-in-Chief of the Kanata Report. It's time once again for Fridays with Frank. This is part three of what's turned out to be a three-part series as Frank responds to Barry Simon of Datamax's question on what can dealers do to diversify. And here in today's episode, Frank talks about wide format and digital presses and his contention that you do not have to be a mega dealer to get into either of those uh, products. It is a viable business plan. And I would encourage all dealers to look that way. Now, the notion that you have to be a mega dealer to succeed in, produc <clears throat> in production print is a fallacy. There are a lot of entry level uh, digital presses that dealers could start with. And I, for the life of me, I, I can't see why they would. First of all, if you get into that type of product, you could also sell monochrome in the education field. And a lot of dealers are currently doing that as, as, as a light production vehicle. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but you're dealing with high speed, uh, high speed product, which means lots of prints because this is still a cut sheet business on the lower end. Now, for growth, for expansion, for profit, you want to get into wide format. Wide format inkjet is unquestionably the vehicle of the future for the successful dealer, without question. There's nothing that is going to equal it in profitability. I mean, when you think about selling one of these industrial prints, and let's say uh, the entry level price for an industrial print line, 125, 140, something like that, depending on what you're rating in the way of software and the front end you're using. Uh, you'll sell $140,000 in ink in the first year. And your margins will be just the same as they are for Tona, for Tona based projects. Uh, that's not insignificant. In fact, when you get delivery on that, that kind of uh, product, it comes in drums, the 55 gallon drums. That's how much you use. Well, because you think of it, think of one of those beds, those flat beds, saturated with color for a signage as an example. Uh, it, it's a win-win. Now, that's the sell side. Let's take a look at the buyer. Are there buyers out there for this? You bet your backside. Uh, we have a commercial printer who does the Canada report. Very successful, does a great job here in New Jersey. We visit with them often. Uh, and I'm impressed by what he's doing. You first of all, you walk into his shop, he's got he's got the conventional cut sheet digital press for a job like ours. And this is what he runs, uh, uh, what he uses to run our report. And it, as I think our, our people who are looking at this or observing this have seen our report know the quality that it has. He does it on that kind of press. He's got two large flatbeds. He's got a Mamaki and he's got an EFI. He has a showroom filled with decorative boxes, all designed by him and made by him on either the EFI machine or the Mamaki machine. So naturally during the pandemic, I've, we, we keep in touch and talk about how things are going. And at the beginning, I would say probably, I'm gonna say May, June last year, I said, how's it going? He said, he said I'm glad you called because I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna be late on delivering the issue. I said, don't tell me that, that you're going to be late. Are you kidding? CJ will go nuts. He said, Frank, he said, I can't help it. We got so much business. 
I've had to convert to a 24 seven. I mean, there's your answer. I said, wait a minute, where, where, where's the demand coming from? Signage, he said, is tremendous. Uh, everything printed on synthetic paper for the obvious reasons about not, not spreading, uh, spreading the, the virus. And he said, not only that, but get the orders, they want them tomorrow. I mean, it's, there's, there, there is not, a much, not enough hours in the day to turn them around as fast as they want. So we decided we're, we're gonna work 24 seven. Now, is he unique? I don't think so. And I, I mean, I, I don't know any other way to describe it. We did an issue, Scott, that you did it last September that had, uh, was it not last September, was the September before we had Atlantic on the cover. Right. We, yep. With uh, uh, Frank Malozzi from EFI and Larry Weiss from Atlantic. We put them on, as, as you remember, because you did the feature. Right. They were the first uh, that we knew uh, that had taken on an industrial print line. Well, they weren't the first, excuse me, we knew of others, but I thought the way uh, Larry did it was a, was a good uh, model for other dealers. Anyway, to make a long story short, I would say conservatively today, his team led by Lou Villa has got to be anywhere between 12 and 14 of these machines out there easily. Because the time we were talking to him last year, early last, this time last year, he had 10 and he was looking at placing two more. So he stopped selling, I don't think so. That's enormous. That is absolutely enormous. Now, yes, Larry is a very big deal. There's no question about it. You're not going to be able to go in and did it, do it the way he did. For obviously, he has greater resources. But hell, sell them one. You sell them one at a time, and you, and it can be done. Uh, I, you know, I, I I've talked about this ad infinitum, and I've always come to the same conclusion. You've got to accept change. The business is changing. The business model. It's got to change along with it. I mean, people talk about, you know, dealers say about diversity, how do I improve clicks? Yeah, dealers have to sit down and figure out how they're gonna compensate their sales force going forward. You can't use the same model you used before. I think uh, we've spoken to some dealers who are doing stuff that makes a lot of sense. For instance, they've structured the uh, comp plan on net new business. Don't, you know, don't expect to make a lot of money to renew a lease. I mean, you're not doing anything for the dealership. You're just renewing a customer. I, I shouldn't say nothing. I mean, because there is competition out there and you do have to sell the renewal. And I don't mean to minimize what it takes to do that, but you can't compensate them like it's a brand new customer. So if you, if you go the net new customer route, where are these net new customers are going to come from? They're not going to be coming from the office. They're going to be coming from all kinds of businesses that you may not be selling today. I mean, just think in terms of if your business is so structured on the office, what about the warehouses that are in the in, in your geography? That have they have their offices right in their warehouse. They have equipment, they need equipment. Call on you. Call on any anybody who conceivably have need for the products that you're selling. And if they're not using them, you can educate them on why they want to. So you have that kind of capability. You've got to go. I always use the term go horizontally in the market instead of vertical. There's nothing wrong with vertical. We know healthcare is a growth market. We know that education will unfortunately. Uh, with the pandemic, but it's coming back. Uh, they're talking about the kids being in school, certainly by mid-year. Uh, 
So education will come back and legal has always been there. So if you take those three verticals alone, those are viable. Uh, and again, that's, that's where your anchor has to be in the business. But again, it can't be just for renewing a legal firm's contract. It's got to be for a new one. Uh, that's where the money has to come in because that's what will mean something. Uh, it, 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 it will create sustainability for the business. Years ago, I listened to a lecture uh, by Ann Mulcahy when she was uh, CEO of Xerox and she was by far one of the finest executives I ever had the pleasure to listen to. She said, you got to create sustainability because Xerox had to go through several changes in that period, which was a radical departure what they had done before. And she was telling them, this is what we got to do to sustain. So I'm going to start using the term sustainability. If you want to have sustainability, then you need to diversify. 